Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich. Uh, if you haven't been outside lately, it is really coming down, um, especially here in Charlotte. We've seen probably about a half an inch of snow so, so far, a few, a few areas getting close to an inch. And the one areas we've been watching where I've honestly seen some really heavy totals have been out towards the east. So I've got the red arrow here. Um, areas around the sand hills and then back down into the PD region and then into areas like Lancaster over towards I-77. So some pretty good snow in those areas. I'm going to zoom in and we'll stop the radar here because you can kind of see the back edge is starting to move into the mountains. But even in the foothills, we've got a couple reports of about a half an inch. Um, I'm looking right now at some of the reports, Table Rock up there in Burke County, about a half an inch. And that is on the weak side of the system. Um, just got a half inch report on Highway 9 near Elgin, um, northeast of Elgin there in uh, Lancaster County. Another half inch report coming in from MACB and uh, about an inch report now coming in from Rockingham. Um, in Charlotte, just based on what I've seen outside on in, in our parking lot, it's about a half an inch right now. Um, there's the temperatures and this is why we're seeing it accumulate so quickly. Um, temperatures right now are only in the mid 20s. Uh, so it's really, really cold air and it's fluffing up. I tweeted earlier, you know, the liquid to snowfall ratio. And someone said, can you give that in English? And, and I'll try to explain it here in the stream because um, typically liquid to snowfall ratios on average, depending on the event, are about 10 to 1. And what that means is for every tenth of an inch of rain, 0 0.10, that equals one inch of snow. So that's, that's pretty significant, you know, fluff up. That means 90% of it is air. Um, and because snow, the way it lays on the ground, you basically get an inch of snow, but only about a tenth of that is actually liquid. So in this case, it's such a dry air mass and cold air mass. I'm seeing like 15 to 20 to one. So almost twice that amount. So very little liquid, but fluffing up. And if you've ever been skiing out West, like in um, Utah, or like uh, Steamboat Springs, like the western part of um, Colorado, known for their, their powder. Um, the powder there is sometimes 30, 40, 50 to 1. Um, it is really, really impressive. So um, um, someone asked, why is the snowflake so tiny? Dry snow tends to be small flakes. Uh, someone earlier was asking, you know, I, I was showing about the, the feeder cedar setup, which I'll show you a graphic here in a second. Um, which, which is helping out with some of the snowfall out there if it made big snowflakes. No, it doesn't. It usually makes tiny flakes because of how dry it is. So I'm going to zoom in on the radar here. Now there's a little bit of delay on my on my remote here that as I go into the system. But um, let me show you this real quickly. I'm actually going to grab a different color. I don't like this color red here. So we'll use, we'll use a, um, a different color here. I'm going to use yellow. Um, so this band right here, which extends from southwestern Rowan County, goes down through northern Mech, in through Gaston, and then down towards the upstate. That's a pretty heavy band, and that has yet to move through the area. When that band moves through, that could dump an additional half inch. So I think that's going to help us verify um, our forecast from earlier of one to two inches across many areas with a trace to one inch back to the west. Here's the, here's the wider view, and I'll let this sit here for a second so you can kind of see the wider view um, of this system kind of moving. There's still some moisture down to the south. I think the snow will continue uh, until about midnight tonight, um, and then it will taper off. Um, Will, good question. Did this system overachieve? Um, I don't know if it overachieved. It definitely was something we were keeping a close eye on um, with a stalled front. It's a great question because I think even I think on Wednesday or Thursday we were talking about this system when it was trending drier and um, I made a I made a pretty good point that it ended up being pretty true is that you got to watch these stalled Arctic fronts um, sometimes they can surprise you so you know our initial forecast I think it was on Wednesday we came out with a one to three inch snowfall we backed it down to about a trace to an inch and then this morning I went back to one to two. Um, I think that's going to end up being pretty close. You know, you think about it, how dry this is, the difference in liquid equivalents is, is pretty close. The air that I think if there's going to be a big air that overachieves, I think the area that's probably going to end up seeing some pretty significant snow is going to be the area northeast of Columbia, around Florence, up to Fayetteville, Rockingham, Southern Pines, Pinehurst. I mean, this area right in your screen, uh, there, there is likely going to be some four, maybe five inch amounts in there just because of how fluffy uh, the air mass is. Um, so let's look at the future cast. And again, this is a, this is our rapid refresh model. 
Um, we'll start it at nine o'clock here. You see temperatures actually already too warm. It's colder than that. Um, goes to show you that the guidance is playing catch up here. 10 o'clock, there's the snow bands. We'll go through a little bit longer here. By 11, 1130, still snow over us, but look at the heavy uh, snow bands here. This is a good example of, you see the heavy snow in Albemarle down towards Wadesboro, um, and then over there towards Rockingham, Sherall, and Lancaster. That's where we're probably going to see some totals um, fluff up pretty quickly over there. That's where I would expect us to really see some, some heavier totals. Um, we'll go through midnight. The snow starts to taper off. After 1, 2 in the morning, it's gone. And we'll probably see some lingering flurries. Couldn't rely on some lingering flurries. But look how cold it is. Temperatures probably dip down into the upper teens to around 20. And then we get towards tomorrow morning. So uh, for everybody who had kids that are asleep or didn't get to enjoy the snowfall tonight, um, if you get them up early tomorrow, that snow will be out there. Um, it's not going to melt right away. We'll see how much it actually is. It should be really powdery. It's not the best snowmaking or snowman making snow because of how dry it is. Um, but it's pretty good sledding snow. I'll tell you that because you pack it down. And dry snow is pretty good. And as we go through the morning hours, I want you to watch the temperatures. They get that stiff northeast breeze, which is going to give us wind chills uh, generally in the teens and single digits. And so it's going to be probably early afternoon, noon to maybe one or two that we start to see the temperature rise. One thing about fresh snowpack, it's got something we call a high albedo. Um, snowpack reflects about 80% of the incoming sunlight. So the sunlight coming in tomorrow will be bouncing back up and not warming us up. So it tends to keep you cooler by day and really cold at night. If, uh, you know, if you're a skier like me and you ski on a sunny bluebird day, you actually have to put sunscreen on the bottom of your chin under your nose because the, the sunlight being reflected up from the, uh, the snow can actually give you a, a snow burn. Um, someone said snow cream. I'm not a big fan of snow cream, Lisa. I, um, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. I know that's a childhood thing and people love snow cream, uh, snow cream, but here's the thing. Uh, we have a saying as meteorologists, uh, snow is nature's vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and the reason we say that is every snowflake has a piece of dirt in it. Now I'm not talking about any dirt, just a speck of dust or something, because for the ice to form the crystal, it needs a condensation nuclei. And typically that's a, a speck of dust, sand, or dirt. Um, so it's, it's not going to hurt you. I mean, nothing, it's not that bad, but just always grosses me out thinking about that in the back of my head. <laughs> it's, it's nature's vacuum cleaner because the best way to clean out the atmosphere or the air is snowfall. It is a really good cleanser of the atmosphere. So, uh, I know that's a big thing. Snow cream, people love it, but, um, uh, you won't catch me doing it. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that out there. That's not, um, I'd rather have good old fashioned ice cream. Um, out there. So loving your, your snow reports. And you, you heard me refer to this earlier. Um, why are the snowflakes so small? And what is what, what made this system do a little bit more snow? Now, a simple explanation here is something, something called the cedar feeder mechanism. Um, and what this is, is basically today, if you looked at the radar and at times tonight for everyone that has radar on their phone, they all said, oh my gosh, Brad, is, it's, it's showing snow but it's not snowing at my house. Well, that's you've, you've heard me refer to Virga. And in this case, you see these cedar uh, clouds that are aloft. They're way up there around 13, 14,000 feet. Um, there is actually ice crystals or snow falling from them, but the air below is so dry that they're not, technically it's called sublimation, but think of it as evaporation. They're evaporating before it reaches the ground. And if you're really curious, sublimation is going from a solid to a gas without going through the liquid phase. So, they're evaporating essentially on the way down. So it's Virga. It's not reaching the ground. But when you have feeder clouds, low-level clouds, which is the low-level moisture that built in tonight as the low pressure fed up the coast, those cedar clouds, that snow will fall into those lower clouds. And just like cloud seeding, which you probably heard of, uh, people do with planes out west in drought-stricken areas to try to get rain. It, it works in small doses, but not on large enough scale to make a big impact. And Mother Nature does a much better job of it. it. It can seed the lower clouds, causing snowflakes to form, and you get tiny snowflakes coming out real quickly. It's not too different than my snowmaking machine in the backyard. I have three nozzles on it. I spray cool water above. I have uh, cold water below it, and they collide with each other, and it creates the snowflakes. So that was kind of a cool mechanism that helped drive some of the snow today. And you could actually see it on the radar at times because those cedar clouds or cedar 
um, higher clouds show up on the radar without anything reaching the ground. So there's a look at the radar. We continue to watch it kind of push off to the east slowly. We've got probably another, I think, two hours of good snowfall. Um, temperatures are actually running cooler than modeled. So that's something to keep an eye on. 26 degrees is pretty cold for snowfall around these parts. We tend to have marginal temperatures, as many of you know, but the fact that it's 26 degrees um, means this is really dry, powdery snow. So it is really fluffing up out there. The other thing that I watch is 25 degrees or lower. Um, you start having issues with salt and brine working. It really, uh, it really, um, that's the kind of the temperature um, where you start to have issues. And again, I feel like I'm doing a giant science course here, but the way salt works, uh, I think immediately people think it melts the snow, but what it does, it actually lowers the freezing point of water and it lowers it down to about anywhere from 26 to 24 degrees. And so that's where water freezes. So once you get to that temperature, actually salt isn't enough to melt anymore because now you're below, you've actually got to the freezing point, what salt lowered the water to, you need another chemical, usually calcium chloride or something like that. And um, a lot of times up north, that's one of the things you have to do when you have really cold, powdery snow like this or really Arctic air, you end to have to mix up other chemicals to lower the freezing point of water even further. Um, some of the chemical snow melts that you see or ice melts you see at the hardware store that aren't pure salt actually do that as well. Um, it lowers the freezing point of water much, much lower. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And that's why I think roads could be a little tough tonight. Because typically here, what we spray on the roads is just straight up water and salt mixture. That's what the brine is. So it, it, that's all it is. It's not really anything more than that um, that sets that up. So I lost my stream here. I can't see your comments anymore. Bummer. Um, <laughs> We have my, I have a little chat bar here on the side and it, it completely crashed. So that was a bummer. I was enjoying, see if I can't log back in. Um, so most of the questions have been about, you know, how long is this going to last? I've got, I've seen a couple questions about, you know, did the front stall closer or farther from the coast? And I have to widen the radar out to show you this. I think in general, what happened today is, um, and early this morning, kind of saw it happening. The front is basically still in the same spot. It really... If anything happened, I think the front maybe came back to the west a little bit, but not that much. And the reason I say it didn't do it that much is one way you can tell is we still have freezing rain and winter precipitation, pre precipitation all the way to the beaches. Uh, if the front had backed up too far west, we would have started to see rain here and the heavy snow here. What happened more so and what's going on in the western part of the Carolinas and why our snow was more widespread um, and really light fluffy snow is the fact that we had that feeder cedar mechanism and the jet stream above our heads was splitting, which allowed for some more lifting to go on in the western part of the Carolinas. And that really is what enhanced our snowfall today. And I could, I could kind of see that today when we were doing some now casting. Um, and that's why if you watched any of my morning vlogs, you kind of saw that we were, we were starting to see some of that develop out there. Um, oh, okay. Now I can, I'm back to seeing. Looks like I can see some of you guys' questions here. Let's see if I can refresh this. I'm gonna throw it back into here. <laughs> uh, so I'm seeing that we had a little hiccup in our stream and so that's probably what happened. Okay, that makes sense. So for everybody watching on YouTube, Facebook, uh, wherever you're watching, um, we had a little hiccup in the stream there, so we apologize for that. I think it'll come back here in a minute. So if you're watching again, um, that's the current temperature and radar. Let me show you our snowfall forecast from today um, before the snow started. We'll have to see if this verifies. I have to go grab it here because I pushed it way down. Um, this is kind of what I was thinking. And this this includes the snow that already fall, uh, fell, by the way. So um, if we're going to bust, it's going to be because <laughs> we're going to add to this. So I generally a trace to one inch in many areas and then one to two inches around Charlotte East. But the thing that was interesting is, you know, up towards the lake, you know, Lake Norman, Mount Mountain Lake, that's probably more in the trace to one inch. And then towards the Mecklenburg County line, closer to two inches, maybe three inches even, depending on how things unfold. But that's kind of the gradient I expected across the area. And when you look at the impacts, it kind of matches up where we're going to see the heaviest snow 
Um, so just be careful out there tonight. I'm, I'm, I haven't see what time the Hornets game is almost over. I was watching it earlier. I expect we'll have a bunch of people coming out after. Okay, just ended. Um, so a bunch of people are walking out of Spectrum Center right now to a winter wonderland, and they went in there with probably nothing falling. Uh, we'll be safe to work in the Lake Wiley area in the morning. I think probably after 11 a.m., I would just watch the bridges and overpasses. I think most of the main roads will actually be pretty good, um, especially if they've been treated and some people have been driving on them. That will certainly help the situation out. Um, but if you really want to be super, super safe, super, super cautious, I think I would wait till you know, we get past maybe that midday time frame, 11 a.m. to 12. The good thing about tomorrow, unlike today, we're actually going to have sunshine out tomorrow. So while temperatures may not be above freezing in the morning, just the sun hitting the pavement and hitting nothing, it warms things up, even if the air temperature stays a bit chilly. So um, the sunshine alone is going to help. So the more the more time you can give yourself after sunrise to get on the road, I think the better off you're going to be because um, that's certainly going to help in many locations. Um, someone said they're driving um, tomorrow morning to Asheville from Lake Norman. I think going that way, you should be fine. Um, the areas you got to be very careful about tomorrow is going east towards the coast or towards the southeast um, for a couple of reasons. The reasons you got to watch going east is one, there's heavier precipitation there tonight and overnight, but also you're running into parts of the state of North Carolina and South Carolina that don't have the road crews and the, the salt and brine trucks like we have in the central and western part of the state. So, uh, for instance, you go into Myrtle Beach, there's no salt and brine trucks in Myrtle Beach. OK, <laughs> there's none in the Wilmington area. There's very few. I know uh, NCDOT and SCDOT have been sending crews out there to help. But um, my good friend, Ed Piotrowski, who's a meteorologist down in Myrtle Beach, he tells this great story. A couple of years ago, they had a big winter event and he said the, the, the city road crews in Horry County um, Department of Transportation, the way they were fighting uh, the, the, the bad roads, they were taking pickup trucks, driving them on the beach, putting sand in the back, and then someone would drive down 17 and shovel sand out the back of the truck to get traction. That was kind of the way they, they dealt with it. So uh, for two reasons, you know, going that way, it's, it's a heavier event and there's less ways to take care of it. Um, so I see a report from Amy in York. Are you legit, Amy? Two inches already? Wow. Um, that's pretty impressive. Um, Belmont, Clover area, Lake, Lower Lake Wiley, about an inch. I mean, that, that seems to be a little bit thunder. I don't think that we saw any thunder, um, at least not here locally. I'm looking at lightning detection. I'm looking at some of the storm reports now. I got about a half an inch up in Valdez and Burke County, um, which seems like a pretty good report. Let me see what this one says. Um, ch -ch 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 it doesn't actually have a number on it. <laughs> so that was from Indian land. So I was hoping we had a report from there. So if you do have some reports, just tweet them at me. Um, tag me WX Brad. That's a great way um, to give me snowfall reports. Uh, and if you're curious about measuring snow, one of the best ways to measure snow is to go out into a part of your yard or a flat part on a deck or something that's been undisturbed and not melted. Take a ruler or a yardstick or even a tape measure. Take three measurements in undisturbed areas, add them up and divide by three. You could average them out. Okay. And that, that'll give you a good rough estimate of the snowfall. And the quicker you do that before things start to settle down, and kind of, um, you know, get compacted, the more accurate the measurement will get. You heard me talk about the liquid equivalent, how dry this is. One of the ways we measure that is we will, uh, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll take all the snow that's probably in my rain gauge, if it's, it's still in there, we'll melt it down into liquid. We'll get a nice liquid to snowfall ratio, or I'll just measure the snowfall in my yard and then look at the amount of rain that uh, melts into the rain gauge, and that'll give you a good liquid to snowfall ratio. So, um, some great questions there. Uh, let's see some other questions I'm getting. Got a, a trace in Cherryville, one inch in Ballantyne, um, about a trace in Indian land, pretty much a dusting. Still snowing though. So that's the other thing. Um, I joked in her I said the best way to go see if it's snowing is to go outside. A lot of folks aren't really venturing out to go look and see and actually measure uh, and probably won't be up very long tonight. A lot of people will go to bed. Um, I will probably 
um, be up for a while here. So I'll take some measurements once this thing starts to slow down and we'll get some accurate measurements overnight before everything kind of compacts. Because if you wait till tomorrow morning, a couple things are happening. You probably have a little bit of melting, but we're also probably going to have some compaction. That's the other thing about snow. It will compact over time just from, from sitting around. So, you know, that's, that's something that, that's why at the airport, what they do is they actually measure every hour and then clean the board off and that they get a very accurate measurement. Um, let's see roads in my neighborhood, like coding. That's, I'm, that's a good report. Um, David, thanks for doing that because that's the one thing I want to hear. It's like how the roads are doing in many locations. Our parking lot was really wet. It wasn't sticking to it too much, but it was sticking to everything else. So I'm, I'm curious to see, um, you know, how quickly it's going to stick to some of the, the area roads around here. What's in store for next week? I knew that question was going to come up, Greg. Um, honestly, right now, it's a little too early to, to see what's going to happen next week. The only thing I'll tell you is if you know my forecasting rules for winter weather around here, um, in, in that long range or for snow, we have, we have these rules. And actually, I got I to gotta pull them up because I, I think I have, you know, if we're going to look at next week's setup, these are kind of my rules. Now, we're not, we don't have the check mark because we're not three to five days out. So we're up in this area here. So that's kind of where we are. And the pattern is favorable for more winter weather next week. So um, that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, the best I can tell you is that we're in that seven to 10 day range for next week. And the pattern recognition is there. It's a favorable pattern for winter weather in the Southeast um, specifics. Um, just like with this storm, you know, in the long range, you kind of see the setup, but as we get into next week, we'll see, we'll have a much better idea um, on what's going to happen. But I will tell you the cold air is not going anywhere. It is going to be sticking around for a while. And anytime you can get the cold air to stick around here in the Southeast, um, you're going to get the potential um, for more winter weather. Um, Slick Roads in Mooresville. Thanks for that, John. Kings Mountain Trueville getting some snow. Um, sticking pretty good on 51 Sam Newell Road. Bridges are totally covered in snow. Uh, thanks for that report. Um, sticking everywhere in Statesville. Yeah, it's kind of that's kind of my concern because of how cold the temperatures are. This is a three-hour loop. Let me cut this to two hours because we need to go back that far because the last two hours really are going to tell the story. And you can see temperatures have generally been falling pretty steadily into the mid 20s. So, you know, that far below freezing and light powdery snow, which is why it's getting cooler. We're getting cold air advecting in from the northeast. We've got this, you know, northeast wind out there, which is pumping in cold air. But at the same time, as snow falls into that, there is some evaporation going on, which is causing um, the atmosphere to cool down even further. Um, let's look at the uh, temperatures real quickly. You know, I plotted them on the radar, but let's just look at the temperature. So you can see 22 in Greensboro, 24 Raleigh. That's, that's really cold. I mean, it's be frigid if it was the morning hours. The fact that it's only 925 and we've got temperatures that cold. So that tells you how cold it's going to be tonight. In fact, let's look at the forecast temperatures over the next 12 hours. Um, I would expect temperatures will probably hover in the mid-20s, snow tapering off after midnight. And then tomorrow morning, we bottom out. Um probably around 19. These are your overnight lows right here. So 19 to 20 to 21 with some mid teens in the mountains. So that's, that's really cold air. So just be prepared in the morning. It's going to, it's going to be pretty slick out there. So if we want to get um, a little excited for next week, let's talk a little bit about the larger pattern here. Um, you see the dip in the jet stream this weekend, really cold air there. That's, that's a cold pattern. You see the, uh, the piece of the polar vortex up there in Canada it's helping to drive down this cold air. We go through next week, you notice the, the trough or the dip in the jet stream over the eastern half of the country stays persistent. And then late week, a little little deeper trough, a little short wave cuts off and starts diving to the south. And you could see it kind of getting down here late next week into next weekend. Um, and so that's, that's a storm right there. That's an upper level storm, cold air in the mid and upper levels. Um, not as much surface cold air as you would want to see this weekend. If we had that same system this weekend, we'd be talking about a much bigger storm right now than what we have. But that's that's kind of the setup for next week 
um, winter fest going on up in blowing rocks, which should be amazing. Um, hopefully I can, I'll be up there. I'm supposed to be up there making snow. Um, I hope I'm not back here working on the snow, but there's a dis distinct possibility that could happen. So before I leave you tonight, uh, I'll show you once again the radar and the temperatures here. We've probably got, let's say 927 right now as we're doing this. We've got a good, uh, I'd say two to three more hours of this light snow. So depending on what you have now, um, I think that's going to, it's been snowing about a quarter, maybe a half an inch per hour in a few spots, but really a quarter of an inch. So that one to two inches, I think, is going to verify in many locations. But again, if you can go out and safely measure, take a, a ruler, tape measure, whatever, go out there and measure three spots in the yard or on the deck or somewhere that's undisturbed, like where dogs haven't walked, animals, yourself, um, away from the trees, the stuff that's fallen off. It's kind of out in the open. Measure three spots, average it out to, to one measurement, and that'll give you a pretty good idea on what we have. So um, tune in tonight at 11. We'll have a pretty good um update here we've got kj out in the storm tracker i'm hoping he's going to have some good views of the roads um as we go and through the overnight hours so you give it a good idea there um and we'll talk about you know the cold temperatures which will be the second part of the story going through the weekend so really appreciate everybody uh logging on tonight facebook um as well as our app uh, wcnc.com and on youtube um if you if you had a chance please please make sure you go and subscribe to our um, YouTube channel, Weather IQ. It's a great channel. Um, Brian, you're talking about parts for your snowmaker. Um, shoot me a message. Um, I've got the plans all online and on my on my blog, um, and I'll show you how to make one of those. If you have a, a, a good pressure washer and a good air compressor, you can buy about $50 worth of plumbing parts and you can make a snowmaker because if I wasn't working tonight, I'd probably be making snow at home, but maybe tomorrow night I'll make snow. I have a date night tomorrow with my wife, so... Um, We'll see if I can con her into letting me make snow tomorrow, but we'll see. <laughs> I don't think she's going to go for that. Um, anyways, everybody, have a great night. I will see you tonight at 11 right here on WCNC. Take care.